The word acceptance turns a lot of people off. Frankly, I'm not a huge fan of the term, even though it's at the beginning of acceptance and commitment therapy. But the reason I don't like it is that a lot of people have these preconceived notions around what acceptance means. And it's usually something along the lines of just suck it up and get over it, which is a sentiment I'm not a super huge fan of. The truth is though, that's not actually what acceptance is. If we were to look up the straight up definition of it, it would be the action of consenting to receive or undertake something offered. And I actually really like that definition. <laughs> See, in act, acceptance refers to the ability to come in contact with our full experience, even the things that are painful, uncomfortable, distressing, that make us feel unworthy and bad and unlovable. The inverse of acceptance is something called experiential avoidance. And it's, it's a process or experience that everyone comes in contact with at some point or another. So much so that we don't even realize we're doing it half the time, but it's usually the reason that my clients come to therapy. We all have a natural desire or tendency to avoid pain. We like to think that if we can just optimize and self-care our way and journal our way in the world, that we don't ever have to experience pain. And so we do everything we can to avoid feeling pain. The problem, of course, is that pain is a part of life. And the more we push it off, we don't make it go away. We give it time to fester and grow larger and bring some friends with it until that pain turns into suffering, turns into anguish that lasts past the moment that we experience it. While we experience it in the big things, oftentimes it shows up in little everyday moments. You cook a big meal, and even though it's important to you to clean the dishes and put everything away, you just feel like, oh, I can't do this right now. And you leave it on the stove top or in the sink. And then the next day or the day after when you come back to it, everything is kind of congealed and hardened and it takes so much more effort to clean it. That pain of that task, that discomfort of that task doesn't go away. It's just waiting <laughs> until your little break is over. Same thing with procrastination. We've all had moments, I know I definitely have, where we look at something and we just don't want to do it. It feels too big, too difficult. We have to talk to someone. We, we feel like we're not capable of doing something, so we push it off. We push it off, and we push it off, and we push it off. And the whole time, while we're avoiding doing the task, we're stressed out about having to do the task because it's hanging over our head. And even though eventually we do the task and it's usually not as bad as we think it is, instead of just experiencing the pain of doing the task, we experience all this extra suffering that gets piled on top of it. And even though we know we have so many experiences that this isn't the way I wanna live my life, this isn't helping me, this is just keeping me stuck, we keep doing it. Because coming in contact with that discomfort, with that pain feels worse. And so we keep doing these things that offer us a little escape in the short term, but in the long term, keep us very far from the life we wanna live. Acceptance is the first stage in that. It's learning how to come in contact with, how to approach some of those difficult feelings. And this may be as simple as acknowledging that you're having the thought that you're stupid and lazy. It might be noticing that a panic symptom is showing up. Maybe that nice little egg in the throat feeling, shortness of breath, or pain or constricting the chest. Just noticing that that sensation's there describing it to yourself, seeing if for a moment you can sit and pause and expand enough to make space for it. Now, it's not suddenly gonna turn into rainbows and butterflies, it's still uncomfortable. But our practice of approaching, of allowing it to be there, because it's gonna be there anyway, gives you back control of how you show up to your life. Because if your whole world is not spent trying to escape, avoid, or hide from something uncomfortable, if you're not constantly in this like immediate one-two punch reaction, then it gives you the space to pause and, and approach the things that really matter to you. And if you're not sure what matters to you, if you don't have clarity around your values, around what you wanna be moving towards in life, this next video is probably for you.